If you could choose one technique, which would you choose? Today, I wanted to give you the answer to that question of what I believe is the only manifestation technique that you need. And of course, we have all of them to choose from and we can play with all of them at different times. But if you just had to choose one, I wanted to give you what I have found to be the most powerful manifestation technique. It is the one that I use on a daily basis with success because this is a technique that works 100% of the time. And if it hasn't worked, it's just because it's not time yet, but it does work 100% of the time. And I have seen this work in the most incredible, unbelievable situations because this is the technique I'm giving to my clients and this is the one they come back to me the most with the success stories. And of course, this is the technique I talk about in my book, I Am Money, and that is what we are going to be talking about today. My name is Headley. If you'd like to know more about me, including coaching and my self-concept course and my book, I Am Money, you'll find those details in the box below this video. But before we get into the video, I wanted to ask you to do just one very simple, easy thing, and that is to click the subscribe button on your screen now. Well, as you can see, I have a brand new microphone and I'm also using a brand new camera. We've really stepped things up up here and I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who sent me emails and DMs and messages giving me some suggestions as to what I should use because I did put a call out as to what I should use with microphones and cameras to really up level my channel and I did some more research and I could have gone for the most expensive one with all the bells and whistles which a lot of the other YouTubers have but this based on my research was just as good as any of the others and it was a quarter of the price and that was the same for this uh, camera as well so I feel like I've done really really well and I cannot believe having heard this sound of this microphone and oh my goodness I should have done this a really long time ago so anyway thank you so much for all of you who've been with me on kind of subpar sound <laughs> i'm so appreciative that you're still here so let's just get into today's video where i wanted to share with you the one manifestation technique because there are so many manifestation techniques and of course that's wonderful because we can play around with different ones depending on our mood and some uh, I find more powerful than others but if you had to choose one what would it be and the answer to that question is so simple and so easy and anyone who's worked with me or had a session with me knows that the one that I use the most with my clients and the one of course that I use the most with myself to great success on a daily basis is the I am technique. Now, you would have heard me talk about this technique before, especially if you've been watching my channel for a while, but I wanted to go more into detail as to why this technique is so powerful because even though we're just talking about three simple little letters, I am is a topic that I could speak endlessly about because there is so much to these beautiful simple three little letters and when you put them together the combination is profound and it is powerful and in my experience it can be instant just because it's simple doesn't make it any less powerful and in my experience it is more powerful than any of the other techniques because you're not having to go into your imagination you're not having to go into the feeling state of living in the end and what it would feel like once you have your manifestation there's none of that we don't actually have to do any of that and I have experienced success with this technique without doing anything else and sometimes I've only done it once and it has worked sometimes if there's some negative assumptions running in the background you may have to do it a few times and especially if your reality isn't showing you any feedback then you may have to just keep doing it for a while but I have found that this technique does work a hundred percent of the time and I have seen it work with my clients time and time and time and time again sometimes in the most incredible mind-blowing ways and I've had people manifest their person back after a year of no contact simply through using this technique in a matter of weeks Weeks, they have had contact from their person of course we're working with the specific reflection but that reflection does come through another person so I'm going to be talking about the I am technique today in a little bit more detail than you may have heard me talk about before but let's go back to the basics just so we can set up the context to why this technique is so powerful 
So consciousness is the one and only reality. And reality that we experience in this third dimensional realm with our five senses is the reflection of what we are doing in consciousness. Another name for consciousness is I am. And another name for God is I am. Another name for awareness is I am. Because I am is based on the observer effect. And that is based on the principle that the one who is observing the object in time and space is the observer of that object. And the observer of that object is the cause of how that object behaves in time and space. So you are the observer of your reality. You are the one who is looking out into reality and you are perceiving objects, and that includes people, in time and space. Now, because reality is so intoxicating, what happens when we go out into reality is we immediately forget who is the one observing reality. Because we are in reality, we are in the sensory experience. And with that sensory experience comes amnesia. So we are in reality and we're experiencing events and situations and we have forgotten that we are the one observing the events from our perception now our perception the observer is called I am you are first person in your reality and who and what you are observing is second and third person so second person is when you are observing someone or something right in front of you Third person is when you are observing somebody at a further distance. So you could be either observing them in your imagination or you could be observing them at a distance. So you're talking about them, he, him, she, it. So when we are in reality, we tend to slip into second and third person perspective. We're looking at you and them. We are forgetting who is the one looking at you and them. And that is I am. I am is the observer of objects in time and space. Therefore, I am is the cause of those objects in time and space, and that includes people. So this technique of using I am is simply when we claim what we are observing in reality, an object or a person, by placing I am in front of it or them, and then we essentially command the behavior we would like to see reflected back. So when we say, I am that thing in reality or that person in reality, what we are doing is we are closing the distance between ourselves and that object in time and space. Essentially, what we are saying is, I am the observer of that object in time and space and I am seeing them or it do this. Another way we could say it is I am perceiving that person or object in time and space and I am seeing this. Now, we're not going to say that. So instead, we just say I am that person or thing in time and space. And then we claim the behavior that we would like to see exhibited through that reflection. I'll give you a very simple example. And I've used this example before. There was a time when I lost a ball. I had a tennis ball, one of Dora's balls, and I lost it. And I then got into the story. I got into the assumption that I had lost the ball. Now, immediately you can see the amnesia because I am believing that the ball to be outside of me and it is now lost. And that's the assumption I hold. That's the story I now tell. Oh, the ball is lost. So I'm now in third person where I'm observing the ball at a distance and I'm saying the ball is lost. As long as I maintain that assumption that that object in time and space is now lost, the object in time and space being the ball must remain lost. So what I would do, and this has happened a number of times, is I would claim the ball with I am. So I would say, I am the ball and I am found. And then I would just walk away and leave it alone. I wouldn't try to look for it. I wouldn't try to find it because the assumption I'm now holding is the ball is now found. I don't have to do anything. It's already found. And then I can just go about my life knowing that the ball is found. So what I'm essentially doing is saying, I am perceiving this ball that appears to be outside of me and I am claiming this ball is found. Now, I'm not going to say that whole sentence. I'm just going to say, I am the ball and I'm found. 
Now, in these examples, I have found the ball 100% of the time in situations that have otherwise been inconceivable. This is after heavy rain. This is after water washing everything down drains. This is after like crazy weather, winds, everything. And the ball will inevitably show up and sometimes it's weeks later, once it was a few months later, and the ball will just show up in front of me at the most unexpected of times when I'm not thinking about it. It's like I've completely forgotten about it and then all of a sudden there's the ball and the ball is now found. I have also used the I am technique to manifest all sorts of wonderful results with specific people. I have manifested text messages, I've manifested phone calls, I've even manifested a meeting with somebody with no contact, I didn't have their contact details, I just had this I am technique and I claimed them as I am and I said I am seeing Headley and I am having coffee with Headley and it worked within a couple of months. Just recently I decided that I wanted to hear from somebody again that I haven't spoken to in over a year. So a couple of months ago I affirmed I am that person's name and I am calling Headley. I did it once, maybe twice and then just forgot about it and that person contacted me after a year. It really does work with everything because I am is the observer of everything in your reality and and you are not impinging on anybody's free will because you're the observer of them anyway. So they are showing up in your reality according to the assumptions you're already holding about them and how they are showing up. Like if you have somebody in your reality and you believe that you are in no contact, you're holding the assumption that you're in no contact with them, you must remain in no contact because that's the assumption you're holding. Reality doesn't prove it to you first. You must hold the assumption, the new assumption that you want to see in reality before reality can reflect it back. So I am that person and I am in contact with me. You must be prepared prepared to allow for time and space to reorganize events so that it can reflect the new assumption back. Sometimes you do not. There is a situation where this technique has worked for me 100% of the time instantly in the three or four years that I have been using this technique. And that situation is when I am in the car and somebody is driving on my ass and they're driving way too close. I will, as soon as I remember who I am, I will claim them as I am and I will say, I am the driver behind me and I am backing off. 100% of the time, they instantly pull back. And I have experimented with this so many times because when they pull back, it's instant. There's no time delay. And that has been the case 100% of the time in that situation. As soon as I claim it, I am the driver behind and I'm backing off. They back off. There is no time delay. So this does work 100% of the time and it can work instantly. But sometimes you may need to give time and space, time and space to reflect this new reflection back to you. So for homework, give this technique a go and observe something. Try something that's not like, you know, I mean, yes, you can get a text or a call from your person. But if you haven't been in contact for a while, don't immediately start off with the most difficult situation in reality to change. By all means, give it a go. It does work, so it will work. But if this is the first time you're using this technique, just build up the evidence that it works because it does work. And when you know it works, it's going to be a lot easier to do it with things that you may have the assumption, oh, this isn't going to work. And I can also say that I have used this technique with clients who have been incredibly resistant and haven't believed it and thought it was too simplistic and they were, you know, this isn't going to work for me. And I've said to them, you do not have to believe this works. Just do what I'm asking you to do and let the rest take care of itself. And every single time those people have come back to me with a success story and oh my God, I can't believe it, it actually works. So that also proves to me that you do not have to believe that this works for it to work. So I am the object or the person in time and space and I am. So claim the behavior that you want to see from that object. And remember, whatever story you are telling about the object in time and space is how that object must behave in your reality. As long as you're telling the story, as long as you're holding the assumption, that object that appears to be outside of you, but is just a reflection of you must do what you are commanding it to do. So change the story first and then you'll 
will change the results in reality. It doesn't happen the other way around. If you are waiting for reality to prove it to you, you are going to be waiting a long time. Your I amness is creating your reality. What you're doing with it is creating your reality. And I am is the observer of reality. And the observer of reality is the cause of reality. So it all makes sense. Let it make sense to you and build that evidence in reality. Put it to the test. Don't take anyone's word for it. And as always, please remember you are the amazing creators of your reality. You are the superstars of your show. You are the producers, the writers, the directors, and the actors in your movie. What you assume to be true will be so. So assume the best for you. Assume the best for everyone in your movie too. And you will have an amazing life. And this is my wish, my vision, and my prayer for you and for me too, of course. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and a comment. Have a wonderful week. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.